Well, welcome to the spring uh, gathering of the Piedmont Mobility Alliance. I'm so happy to see everybody. Um, as usual, the, um, the meeting notes are a collective effort, so I um, demand everybody to sign in and encourage people to um, uh, uh, help out with the notes, especially when you're talking about your own stuff. Uh, we have a tradition here at the Mobility Alliance where we reward people who are on time for stuff by having a, a contest. And today's contest, the prize will be a copy of Cycling for Sustainable Cities by Ralph Bueller, uh, an alternate planning god, you might say, alternate transportation god who works at Virginia Tech, cycling for sustainable cities. The prize will go to the person that puts the most impactful thing that they plan to do on Earth Day in the chat. So what are you doing on Earth Day? The person who puts the most impactful thing wins a copy of Cycling for Sustainable Cities. We'll keep it open for just a few minutes. If you think the question's too subjective, um, you can blame Chris Ginsick. That's it was his idea. I see one answer from Lucinda. It is possible to win by default. So if somebody has something more interesting than that, it's almost like an auction of um, sustainability, right? Like um, I see not mowing the lawn. Do we have have something more exciting planned for Earth Day? We have medication drop off. Medication drop off. Oh, and we have celebrating the next generation. That's important too. What else? What are people doing to celebrate Earth Day? Planting gardens. Oh, heading up to the Grillin Nursery, planting gardens. Put that in the chat, whoever said that. I think that was Jason. So we, we have a record of everything. And we're going to hold you accountable. So we need it to be in writing. Do I need to send a picture later after I've planted my garden? Uh, yes. In order to get the prize, you'll, you'll need to offer some kind of proof. All right, I'll give you a zucchini at the end of the summer. How yeah, about that? Um, no bribes, no bribes. My ethics are beyond um, question. So. Okay, without doubt. All right. So um, we'll give it one more minute till 205, then we'll get started with the actual meeting. What are you doing for Earth Day and is it more impactful than what we're already seeing in the chat? All right, so um, about 30 more seconds. Recycling, okay. Um, it's going to be hard to have a show of hands with a couple of people with our cameras uh, turned off. So, um, Meadow Creek cleanup and planting my, uh, oh, Meadow Creek cleanup and planting a garden. Um, well, uh, that prob probably would win, but Faith, you already have a copy of the book in the office, so you, you, you can't win this particular prize. Um, okay, so it's 2 of 5, we'll start the meeting, but first um, I, I will nominate two uh, semi-finalists or two finalists that we can choose between. Let's say um, we have Jason taking, a, well, you can get credit for past activities, but uh, nope, 
no, it, stuff you've already done doesn't count. So now we're down to um, heading to the recycling center, running a medication drop-off program. And uh, yeah, how about, and celebrating the next generation. So, um, uh, in, in, any preferences among you all? You can't vote for yourself. What do you think? I'm gonna put a vote in for the recycling center. All right. Recycling, second. recycling center has a second. Are there any other nominees? All right, then we'll go to a rare Mobility Alliance vote, which is by consensus generally. Are there any objections to the Recycling Center trip winning? Somebody voted for Next Generation in the chat. Oh, okay, so so now we, can, we can't have it be by consensus anymore. Um, is there a second to the Next Generation? As in, it's their problem, not ours. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So that's, what, that, that's actually that's actually what Thomas Jefferson said about slavery. Uh, okay. Dang. We we this is getting long. This is longer than our typical trivia contest. Okay. So, um, if your camera is on, or um, you can uh, also vote for by raising your hand with the reaction. It, how many votes for going to the recycling center? I see. I see. Ethan Tate. Six, six. Yeah, it looks like we have six votes for that. And um, celebrating the birthday of the next generation. Uh, how many votes for that one? No voting twice. Uh, okay, looks uh, it's close. It's close. Uh, well, great news for you all. I have two copies of the book. You both will win. Great job. So join to the recycling center and celebrating. Nice job. But now I'm giving up my own copy, but I've read it. That's, that's cool. All right. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, as we've been saying in the chat, please um, go into the notes document and indicate your presence and also help us with the, the note taking. Um, this is the first meeting that we've had after the uh, February Mobility Summit. So it's, a, it's quite a full agenda, pretty exciting. Um, the uh, core really of the summit is having uh, people come together, form work groups, and uh, have uh, periodic deliverable report outs. Our first one is six weeks, so we're going to have a report out here. And then we typically also have a mini summit in the fall, and there'll be another set of report outs from the groups there. So forgive me if this uh, meeting's a bit more summit heavy than others. Um, that's just the structure, and, and that's how our collective impact model actually gets stuff done. So, um, uh, first, um, the first thing that we have on the agenda is um, simply debriefing the summit. Um, we, we had a good debrief within the summit, so, um, and we had good feedback. Um, what, what are people's lingering thoughts? That um, that you're still carrying, or that that people might be interested to share. Um, quick other housekeeping note um, uh, is that um, two things: we're going to do introductions, but we're going to give a little more time for people to show up. And the other um, housekeeping is this is a room of equals, so you can simply unmute and start talking. You, you don't have to raise your hand or anything like that. Um, but be respectful with it. So with that, thoughts about the summit? I can go. Um, 
<clears throat> I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I'm excited to work on the bike to work week stuff that we started there. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's going well. I think we have. Sorry if you hear a noise in the background where I live. It's just a bunch of industrial wasteland in front of me, so you just hear constant construction noise. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to have that opportunity to kind of work with different stakeholders, including me, who's at the county, and kind of get this um, event going back again. You know, bring it back to Charlottesville, and you know, have this first year be maybe more of a test run to see what works, what doesn't, and then you know, upcoming years kind of flesh it out and have better programming as we go along and more support and more people knowing about it. Thanks, Alberic. And we're, we're going to have a detailed report outs from each of the working groups. So um, we'll, we'll get more into the Bike to Work Week, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, uh, other other uh, thoughts or um, ideas to share? Uh, the evaluation form spoke, I, I see you, Jason, I'll, I'll complete my sentence and then you'll be next. Um, the evaluation form spoke um, pretty universally about people loving the panel on um, DEIJ. Uh, folks love that. And they also liked um, actually being together in person. So those were, were two um, positive things that folks said. Jason, I see you. You said what I was going to say. I liked the panel a whole lot. I thought it was real and it was good. And there was some truth spoken. And um, and then being together was good too. Um, being able to have side conversations was nice. Awesome. Um, I think uh, one there's a couple of feedbacks that we always get with every single um, summit. One is to to have a, a more equitable representation at the summit. That's that's always a challenge. And then I I think one thing that that um, that we heard that was interesting is. Uh, Folks mentioned that certain key interest groups were absent, like there was nobody from the um, really from the organized cycling community at all, which was pretty surprising. Like of all the people on bikes, Cambic wasn't there, the racing club wasn't there. Uh, Ethan Gruber I, I, is quite quite a powerful cyclist, so having him there was great. Community bikes was there, that was good. But by getting these well-resourced um, interest groups into the room uh, would would be helpful. And then people also, a few other people mentioned that folks with power were less in there than than we would like. So as an alliance, we've done um, great at uh, working at the staff level. So from that perspective, we, we have people who are you know, doing the work on the ground. But when the Mobility Alliance was founded, we actually had a city council member and a board of supervisors member on, you know, as a regular attendee of, at the meeting. So um, I didn't want to like be too high profile with in, inviting like key people, like whatever, Sally Hudson would have come if we had invited her, stuff like that. But because it was the first time I kind of kept it low key. So I think that's interestingly also an area where um, I think we can and should do better. Um, any other quick um, thoughts about the summit? Was, was Michael Barnes from VDOT there? Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, okay. he was. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was just going to say invite somebody from VDOT, but you've got it. Yeah, um, but maybe not just Michael. I think it, it would be interesting to, for example, um, work with Michael to get some of the resident engineers in there. I, I think having like tying them with, you know, with on the ground practitioners and advocates, I think would be interesting. And, and some of them are, are quite interested in this stuff 
and and I'm sure would show up if they were actually invited. Um, well, there's so there's that whole new uh, trails department. Um, maybe they want to come do a presentation or something. That would be that's a great idea, uh, Blair. Could you be sure to get that in the notes? Actually, Saint Sawyer. Uh, sorry, yeah. it, it's Saint Sawyer would be a good person, but would Hudson? I mean. He used to be part of the Mobility Alliance, so you know, just I could just text him, and or or you could just say it to your your own wall list, and then he would probably hear it echoing. So, um, <laughs> great great point. Um, I wanted to get your advice on on something related to the summit, but it's it's later down in the agenda, but we can tackle it now. So I just said we we have a half year check in. Uh, which we call the mini summit. It, it's like this gathering, but you know, a little bit more focused and and possibly in person, possibly tied into a social thing. Um, one idea that I ha had was to actually um, tie it in, perhaps with the Loop de Ville. So the Loop de Ville is, is the celebration of the Rivanna Trail. That's two days, and they're changing the way it is a little bit. So, so Saturday is a super big day and then Sunday is like a little bit more low key. One idea might be to, um, to have a more citizen facing version of our mini summit in conjunction with the, um, with the Loop de Ville as their Sunday thing. So it might be something like, um, Easy walk in Riverview Park or on the Rivanna Trail combined with food, combined with us having a presentation or um, even a facilitated discussion. Um, assuming that Tommy and RTF are even interested in entertaining the idea, um, are there objections to, um, to me pursuing that idea with them? Or does it make sense? I think that makes a lot of sense. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. And, and you know, thinking about who was at that Sunday celebration last time, we did have you know, Sally Hudson, Lloyd was there, and Malik was there. A lot of the, the people that will only show up at the Zoom meeting if there's something that we know is, you know, dear to their heart. So I'll, I'll check in with Tommy and, and let you all know um, what he says um, or uh, what the Loop de Ville folks have to say. All right. So anything else about the summit, the mini summit, et cetera? Um, by the way, that Loop de Ville mini, if it is a mini summit, would be September 23 or 24. Many summits usually around Labor Day, so the timing is pretty good. Okay, so um, moving on to the collective impact project update. Um, I don't see um, Ethan Gruber on the call. Is, is there anyone here that's been paying close attention to the um, to the Seville Bike Fest and Criterium that can um, that can give an update. Okay, um, hearing none, I'll, I'll relay a couple of things. We're um, uh, the Bike Fest is on April twenty eighth. It's it's all day. Um, really from something like 10 to 4. We'll locate the flyer and get that in the meeting notes. Um, one, one thing I do know is that Ethan is looking for volunteers. And another thing that we, we heard about from Ethan at the last meeting, and we hear about it from him, frankly, every time he, he speaks to us, is that the local local businesses are a bit unsure about whether this is a good thing or a bad thing for them. So um, anything we can do to stop local within the Preston corridor 
and even letting them know we're there because the Seville um, bike fest would be um, would be good. Um, PEC is going to have a, a table there for the um, sort of representing the Mobility Alliance. I would love to have some company there. Um, if you're able to volunteer at a Mobility Alliance table on the 29th, just um, say so in the chat and or in the meeting notes. 29th of April? Sorry, yes, April 29th. So that's next weekend, coming up real soon. Uh, one thing I heard that that um, they've done a great job of getting the word out, but not even Ethan has, has really um, shared this piece, which is that there's actually a Boy Scout troop that's going to set up a bike rodeo in the Regenton parking lot at the same time. So. So that'll be, really be activities ranging from professional cyclists to regular people riding on the closed streets in the bike parade to pull on like toddlers in a bike parade in a uh, bike rodeo. So I think that's going to be cool. I just wanted to mention as well they do, uh, they are putting on or UVA Cycling and the Racing Club are putting on the Jeff Cup the following day as well. So it really will be a full weekend of cycling. They'll have the, um, it'll be out by Blenheim on the backside of Carter Mountains. So uh, more activities on Sunday as well. And I would sign up to help Peter with the table, but I'll actually be there with the Grozen Bureau do it already. So I won't be able to pop in. That's cool. So on, uh, will you be there on Saturday? Yep, we'll be there all day with the van. Awesome. So so let's stop by and visit. That Sounds good. Be fun. Um, and one other incentive, I'm like all full of candy. I, I happen to have a Mather gift card that I got um, uh, in my stock and at work. Um, anyone that, that comes and helps me might be able to get a milkshake out of the deal. So. Um, Faith is smiling because I don't know. Did you get one of those too? Um, I did not, but I wish I did. It's a warm yeah. day. I love milkshake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so come help on on um, civil civil bike fest, and um, you'll, maybe you can have one. Um, I and like I will buy, I'll be there. And recognizing faith and realizing that probably not all of you know who faith is. I realized that I forgot the introduction. Step. So, so let's just pause the meeting real quick and, and do um, some lightning introductions. Now, I think most people who are going to be here are, are here. Um, I, I'll call you out just by order on my screen. First, I see um, to the left of me, even on the screen, it's Blair. Hey, uh, everyone. I'm Blair Wilner. I'm an intern with the Piedmont Environmental Council uh, for another, I don't know, three weeks or so. Um, but I'm also affiliated with UVA. I'm a PhD candidate there. Awesome. Thanks. Chris. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Chris Ritter. I am with the Charlottesville Almar Convention and Business Bureau, uh, destination oh. development there, and kind of working with the outdoor recreation stakeholders, too. Awesome. Frank. Uh, Frank, uh, we can't hear you, um, but I'll, I'll introduce you unless you have something different. Um, Frank Devinney is in Albemarle County, but he actually represents Charlottesville's Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. He's a um, commuter cyclist, rides all the way across the development area to get from home to work. So he's a champion. Um, Speaking of Albemarle County, I see Michael Geithert. Yeah, I'm a bike pit advocate up in Carsbrook. Just a citizen. Thank you, Michael. Lucinda? Hi, Lucinda Shannon. I work at the Thomas Jefferson Planning District Commission. 
Um, I'm also representing the Charlottesville Area Alliance, which is the aging group. Excellent. Alberic. Hi, I'm Alberic. I'm a planner at Albemarle County, um, transportation planner. So anything to do with that, really, if any questions, I'm here just providing any input or feedback on stuff as well. Awesome. Thank you. Faith, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Faith. I, I run the Buy Fresh by Local program at Piedmont Environmental Council, but um, I'm here because I am a commuter cyclist and avid biker in the area, so just interested in, in increasing mobility in this area. So thought I would join in and see what's going on. Thanks for stopping by. Jason. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm an urban planner and a consultant. I work uh, for myself. I um, have always been working in the active mobility realm of the transportation world, but most recently, last 12 years, I've been working on programs that deal with outdoor rec economies and main streets, as well as local food systems um, and health and access and food justice. So those are uh, my other things other than active mobility uh, that I've been leaning into. Bye. Thanks, Jason. Ben. Hey, I'm Ben Chambers. I'm the Transportation Planning Manager for the City of Charlottesville. <clears throat> um, I used to work for the City of Charlottesville about a decade ago in the school bus department. Um, in the meantime, I have been in the private consulting side, uh, doing a lot of work with last mile connections to transit. So a lot of bike ped work that connects people to transit so they can get to uh, groceries and hospitals and all the fun things in the world. Um, Really excited to be here. I'm, I'm glad to be back with Charlotte. So. Well, we're sure glad to see you. Um, Jen. Hey, everybody. I'm Jen Fleischer. I'm with the Blue Ridge Health District, and we are working on a community health improvement plan that includes improving transit and transportation to improve health. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks. We're so happy to see you, too. Lonnie. Yeah, I'm a planning commissioner for Albemarle County, representing the Whitehall District, also a member of the Charlottesville Track Club and um, runner. Excellent. Thank you for coming. Um, Ethan Tate. Uh, hey, uh, Ethan Tate. I live in Charlottesville. Um, I've been in the nonprofit sector for a while um, and recently um, getting ready to start my own business. Um, I'm on the Charlottesville Bicycle and Pedestrian uh, Advisory Committee, uh, and I have a almost four-year-old who loves, uh, loves, loves e-biking with me. Um, she's a passenger, but um, she's a big fan. So am I. Maybe, maybe if she gets some like super high platform shoes, she could be the the rider, and you can be the passenger. Um, Diana. Hi everyone, I'm Diana Webb. I work at Center Martha Jefferson Hospital as a community health music leader. So happy to see you today. Alex. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Alex EK from the city of Charlottesville, Office of Community Solutions. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for coming. Uh, Patricia. Hello everyone, I'm Patricio from Habitat for Humanity. Um, I am very interested in biking in Charlottesville. So I just say just a citizen that loves bikes. Well, we, we love having you. you. You've done a lot of work and um, a, a couple of different stops along the way. So thank you for having you um, uh, here today. Uh, Chris Ginsick. I'm Chris Hendrick, the City of Charlottesville Park Department, and I'm the uh, Trails Planner Coordinator for the uh, City. Uh, thank you for um, joining us, Chris. And um, I'm sorry, but you were too late to win the um, the big prize uh, in the um, Earth Day activity competition. Uh, um, maybe next time, sir. Um, Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, did I miss anybody? All right, so uh, wonderful. Um, back in the agenda, um, Bike to Work Week is also coming up real soon. That's May 15th to 19th. And there, there's 
quite a good group that's uh, working together to make it happen. It really embodies uh, what the summit is about. It used to be something that that basically Amanda Ponce did with a little bit of help from BPAC. And this year, it's truly like a multi-party collaboration with the city, the county, UVA, uh, TJPDC, all making very significant contributions to it, as well as Livable Seville, who in this case are the gravitational force holding it together, PEC and others. So um, super exciting. Um, uh, Alberic, would you like to, um, to say a little bit about Bike to Work Week, or would you prefer to save your voice for a county update? Or you could do both. I can say a little about it. Um, so, awesome. essentially, so essentially, it'll be usually it's a bike to work day is what most places do, since, but we're not going to restrict ourselves to this one day. So we're going to have a week of uh, different activities planned um, from Monday to Friday. We're looking to have a kind of a big get together with everyone, I think, at the start of the week to just kind of let everyone kind of introduce themselves and get to know each other and get more familiar with the programming and then have events like uh, uh, pit stops along different bike routes for people to go downtown. We're going to have one in front of the county building on uh, McIntyre, kind of in that little picnic area on the front steps. Uh, we're going to have, I believe, what they call, like, I guess, like bike buses or bike convoys, essentially. So we're going to have people kind of lead groups of bikers to commute to work if people don't feel as comfortable maybe biking by themselves um and then we're going to have as well the county an e-bike demo um that'll be that thursday in the afternoon from like four to six it'll be both for county employees who are just already there but if everyone else in the public would like them to stop by and try e-bikes i'll have mine there um josh Harp, who is very important in this he runs like the e-bike library in charlottesville he'll provide some of his and then I might ask some of my coworkers if they can, you know, give us their bikes for the afternoon so we can have people try them out. It'll be in the in the small parking lot where the EV charges are in the county. So it's not a huge space, but I think it's adequate enough so that people can, even if they can get in a bike and kind of see, oh, this goes kind of fast, it's kind of fun and kind of useful. I think that's enough to generate some interest and people can, you know, follow up with Josh or me and whoever else if they have curiosities more about e-bikes. Um, Anything else, Peter, anything else that I'm missing about Bike to Work Week that you'd like to mention? Yeah, so um, I'll just uh, point out that the Bike to Work Week, like all of our collective impact stuff, is people doing things, right? It's, it's, not, it's not us saying there ought to be a Bike to Work Week. The Bike to Work Week is going to be the sum of what people are doing. So Alberic is, is point on this uh, county office building event. I'm going to be uh, leading uh, the, a bike bus across town and also uh, working with a blue wheel to have a swag station. But there are many ways that uh, anybody can help. The, the easiest way, or perhaps one of the more available ways is simply pledging to bike to work, right? Then you're already making this be an event by doing that. And um, you could also propose uh, events that uh, you'd like to lead that could be anything from high-fiving people going by on the street to working with your employer to have a huge rewards program for biking to work. Um, we need everybody's help getting the word out. That's going to be important through both uh, social media, which I'll, I'm pretty communicative. I'll get you that info and also flyers. I'll be sending those out, but there's also already a link to them in the um, meeting notes or by joining the um, organizing committee. Um, we're gonna meet sometime uh, at the end of next week or beginning of next week. Stay tuned for more information about that. Hey, Peter, um, if you work from home, should you ride a stationary bicycle? Can we add that to the uh, post-COVID world? Well, so in the post-COVID world, it's actually, and this is something we wrestled with, it isn't bike to work day anymore. It's bike where you're going day. So um, if you go to the park, then you ought to ride your bike there. If you go out onto the porch, Chris, from your home office, I expect you to ride your bike from your home office to your front porch. Um, or it could be stationary too, that's good too. Um, 
I know places like Harrisonburg have changed it to bike everywhere week, basically. Right. Like, yeah. Not just bike to work week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe we should uh, consider that. The reason we, um, we had a vote about that and it was a close vote. We stuck with keeping work in there just to clarify that this is travel. This isn't, this is only about recreation, but biking everywhere is, is a good compromise. So, yeah. Um, uh, pausing the meeting real quick to introduce somebody who is, who is joined in. Um, Ellie, are you able to unmute yourself? Um, if I, I can introduce Ellie. Ellie is, is a member of the Rivanna Trails Foundation board and significantly she's the leader of the Three Knots Trails effort or one of several leaders, but probably the biggest doer among that group. Um, also, I see uh, Lee uh, Condor on the call. Um, could you introduce yourself real quick? Yes, uh, I'm uh, the chairman of the SeaTac. Uh, we've been looking at the uh, next uh, long-range transportation plan and uh, trying to incorporate all modes of transportation in it. Thank you. And for those of you without the acronym um, dictionary with you, SeaTac is the Citizens Transportation Advisory Committee, which is one of the um, governing pieces of the um, local planning organization. So thank you, Lee, your, your presence here is very timely with the long range transportation uh, plan in the work. Um, uh, okay, and um, okay, moving back to the uh, agenda, um, to the next two or, at least two of the next items are without their champion. Um, it, can anyone here give an update on Riverfest or simply be aware other than it's simply happening on May 20th? Chris, is this something you're working on? I'm not directly this year for um, Riverfest stuff, no. Well, so Riverfest is a, a super fun event. It's got a foot race. It, it is a boat race. It has a Rivanna River cleanup. It's going to have music, food, and drink at Rivanna River Company May 20th. Um, also, PC will be tabling. I won't have milkshakes, but maybe I can offer something else um, for that. It It's pretty fun to be hanging out at R R Rivanna River Company listening to music and calling it work or, or volunteerism or whatever it is we want to call it. So I strongly encourage you to join that. Um, and uh, the Unity in the Streets bike ride is is a um, a bike ride that uh, was uh, the brainchild of Rob Gray, who is who works for the Uhuru Foundation. They work with um, at-risk youth and adults, and they put on a pretty amazing um, community bike ride last fall. They're looking to do one again in the um, spring, probably on June third. They want to get kids right before they um, get out of school. Um, they're working closely with community bikes and safe routes to school. Um, I don't think I'll be able to help them because I have a schedule conflict. So if you would be interested in helping a group that's, that's exactly the kind of group we want to work with, organize a community bike ride, send me an email or a, a DM in the chat and um, I will hook you up with the people who are working on that. Excellent. Um, and then also at the Mobility Summit, uh, this is actually something that um, Lee and Lonnie and others uh, might be able to speak to. Um, perhaps uh, Ali, um, uh, or Michael Geiser, there, there was a group that was talking about 
Uh, changing the way we do planning so that rather than focusing on infrastructure that we have in ways that that needs to be improved, but looking closely at where people are walking, biking, and running, or where they're trying to do those things and create improvements in those areas. Um, have has have you guys uh, come together as a group? Have you have you all like um, made any progress on that work? As far as I know, no one has come together on that. Um, if they have, I haven't heard about it. I mean, I still think it's a very important need. Um, for example, Abmar County just recently put together their priority list for road paving projects. Um, and so right now there's a lack of data when when things like road paving projects are put before the, the county or when people propose bike lanes or, or that sort of thing. It'd be really nice to have more objective data on like, well, who are the users of this? Are we going to are we going to impact current users who may walk or run or cycle on those roads? Um, or is a bike lane going to benefit people that, you know, so, you know, for a long time, the transportation standard, you know, for cars has been you know, doing a traffic study and getting car counts. Well, we really lack that information for, for runners, cyclists and walkers. Um, and we know that we can get some of that data from Strava. Um, and I've, I've heard that there is also data um, that you can glean from cell phone information, although I don't know how to do that. So if someone's um, familiar with that process of gleaning that data, um, I'd be interested to hear about it. But um, I certainly would like to sort of open the conversation and, and get people more interested in trying to utilize some of the available data that we have so we can get to that point that when we do have projects proposed or when we're doing planning exercises that we can talk about not just car traffic counts, we can talk about, you know, um, the places that people are running, cycling, and walking. Um, can, can I just share anecdotally uh, I live on Watts Passage and the bridge is closed. It's been closed for a couple months. Um, and uh, we are really enjoying our road. Um, people can get out and walk on it now. I've met a lot of my neighbors. Um, there's just been a huge increase in the foot traffic. People have lived there um, from before. It was like had a, a double yellow line down it and they were regretting that they got a double yellow line. I met somebody who said that they were there before it was paved and they really missed that. So there's definitely um, anecdotally at least data <laughs> that about, you know, that there are people who want to use roads um, and are not able to because cars are speeding too quickly down it. Um, I won't I won't walk on my road if the cars, if that bridge was open, the cars go really fast and it's very twisty and it's not it's not safe for pedestrians. Um, so uh, we have street light data that takes cell phone data, but I don't I don't know how to use it. So I can't really help with that. Thanks. And I think this is valuable feedback. We have a very similar um, situation in Sugar Hollow. Sugar Hollow used to be a gravel road and it was paved. Um, luckily, traffic speeds are still low enough that it's still, you can, there's still a lot of cycling, cycling and running occurring on that road, but um, it's certainly nowhere near as safe as it used to be. And there's, there's definitely been accidents that have happened, happened in our neighborhood um, because that road was paved. I know, um, I know I mean, one of the big problems is that I don't think the public's informed when they're told about these road paving projects. There, you know, there's a really interesting one that happened um, in Southern Albemarle where, well, what was the name of that road? Um, but it is highly used by runners and cyclists. And one of the people along that road came before the board of supervisors and said, oh, we need to pave this road because it's going to make, there's a lot of, there's a lot of runners and cyclists on this road and it's going to make it safer for them. And, and no one contested that to the board of supervisors, that that was, that that was not true. Um, and so 
I think um, people, I've seen several instances where roads have been paved in Albemarle um, and then people have made their own homemade signs that have gone up later, like please slow down, people live here. Um, because people just don't understand. Like, and, and one of the big things is, is that police do not enforce speed limits on rural roads. You cannot, I've, I've asked them, I've said, you know, I've, I've, I've offered, I said, listen, I will pay the salary of a police officer if you just go out there one Saturday, but no one, no one will do it. Uh, thank you. And um, Lucinda and Lonnie talked about sort of the um, sort of prohibitive possibilities here. In other words, like stopping uh, an ill-conceived idea because it could cause harm. Um, their, their logic also um, allows for new possibilities to imagine and to be imagined. Um, so I, one case where it's, it's working locally and it's because we do planning from a million different directions. So we capture information in a bunch of different ways, but like the, the biscuit run connector that's underway happens to be a, a line on the county's map, but it, it's a priority for the county to actually build because a whole lot of people are using that uh, as a resource. So, you know, looking at that's one clear example where you, if you look at the Strava map, it's a bright, you know, blue line um, that lines up perfectly with Albemarle's comp plan. So um, bring in, and of course, Strava is a limited resource. It, it needs to be just one of many information, but I, I think this is super important. And um, just uh, before moving on from it, in the one of the things I heard in the, um, uh, LRTP uh, discussion is that this is a 50-year plan and people were not traveling 50 years ago the same way as they are now. And assuredly, things will be different 50 years from now. So, um, And Peter, can I just jump in and say, like, I, I appreciate kind of the, the value of making it safer for folks who are already using uh, different roads and trails and things, but I, I would take that information with a pretty significant grain of salt uh, because just in my own limited experience, there are plenty of roads that uh, I would like to take or places I would like to go that I choose not to because it's just not safe to do so. And so like, you know, if, if you look at my data, we're going to get bike lanes and all these like little back roads with no traffic and slower cars when what I really want is a bike lane, you know, a, a separated bike lane on Preston Avenue or a separated bike lane here or there where there's like actual demand. And so I, I guess I, I would just uh, not push back on it, but I, I'd also encourage folks who have the power to do sort of think about uh, the idea that like any place where it is good for cars to be going at larger volumes. Bicyclists and pedestrians also want to go in those places because oftentimes they're the most direct route. So, I mean, in, in a world of infinite resources, every time something gets repaved, you put down $14 worth of paint and a bike lane has emerged. Uh, I realize it's more complicated than that, but current data is good, but it doesn't tell anywhere close to the full story. Yeah, yeah, here, here. I mean, there, there would be um, no, if we only looked at existing data, we'd think that uh, nobody wants to be on Route 29, for example. And they don't want to be on the Route 29 that we have, but um, lots of people want to reach destinations along and through an area like that. Um, it, I would love to use, um, I'd like to use our national bike route to um, go from Whitehall to Charlottesville or, you know, or, or go from Whitehall to Crozet, but it's super deadly. Um, I don't know if there's data out there about accidents that cyclists have had, but just from the stuff that I see driving to Crozet, I, I feel like there's gotta be. Um, it, there is data. Um, I have it if you want it. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd like I'd like to see that because I think um, I think one thing too when I talked to some uh, one of the VDOT people at the last meeting, um, he said he said that there's not funding for um, there's not funding for example to do all of eight ten to improve that road for cyclists. I said, well, well, wait a second. Could we just like pick a problem spot? Could we identify like once a year or something, like one curve or something that's just really atrocious and fix that one? And so, oh, yeah, that's doable. I'm like, oh, well, there you go. Maybe that's the maybe that's the way we move forward on this. Is that you know, if we had been back when we knew that Garth Road and eight ten were a problem, if we had been incrementally improving those things, it would be fixed now. All right. Uh, um, you're with the PDC, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have access to like, uh, I don't know, street light data or eco counter or, I mean, because there's, there's data out there. It's just, you just got to pay for it. We, we have access. We have access to street light. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to use it. And right. I, it's not part of like, I don't need to use it for my job. So um, for what I do, but right. I like, I guess I could try to learn or I don't know. I don't, I don't have like any reason. At the but you guys have a license for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a license for anything like there's like eco counter and there's a couple other uh, bike ped counter things out there? Um, like science direct i'm just did a quick google search on it um but it looks like streetlight data has has that for um they're the main transportation thing so i don't know um maybe i'll pop in your office one day sure. that is good and the most important way to influence this stuff is by um, being active with the long range transportation plan. And so, you know, we, we can knock on Lucinda's door all, all we want and she's working on her stuff. And, but, you know, Sandy's the group that Sandy's put together to work on the long range transportation plan, I think are the ones that we want to, to um, influence about that. Um, maybe between now and the group report out, Lucinda, you could be thinking about ways that people could engage with the LRTP and then share those in the group update. Um, cause that, that is the hugely important opportunity. Um, and, and what I heard in the past about that is typically the long range transportation plan focuses on the growth areas and the developed areas. Is there a way that we could? assert more influence and interest and in making sure that it includes rural areas as well. Um, right, I can answer that. Um, so the long range transportation plan is for the Metropolitan Planning Organization. So that's only the urbanized areas that that's planning for. That we do have a rural uh, transportation advisory committee that um, has a like it's similar to the long range transportation plan um, that has not, it's like not being updated at the moment um, that would do a similar plan for the rural areas. Uh, also though, I think that, and San, Sandy's a contact for all of this stuff. Um, she has just received a huge grant for a Safe Streets for All and that includes the rural. And so that would be doing a similar plan um, for safety for the roads in the urban and the rural areas. Um, and that one, I think, would be the one that you'd be wanting to talk with Sandy about. Yeah, so and somehow we need to connect the dots. Gets, you said it was Sandy or Cindy? Sandy. Sandy, Sandy Shackleford. I'll put her email in the, in the um, chat. So it, so it seems somehow we need to connect the um, we need to the the I already forgot the name of it the the application that you have the license for that uh, is, is um, something light is street light street light somehow we need to get that street light data for pedestrian traffic to to Cindy. Uh, so, well, 
Sandy has Sandy, the street sorry. light. Sandy, Sandy has like she she knows more about street light than I do. She might have even have used has used it. Um, so she has that. Uh, yeah. So. Um, and and by the way, that safe street for all grant is is not just rural Albemarle. It, it's the five county. TJPDC area, so it'll include Green and, and um, Nelson and Fluvanna and um, Louisa, I guess. So yeah, really, really rural communities. Um, not wanting to um, stay on the, this issue um, really any longer. Uh, let, let's move on. I'll just give a um, quick update. There is a group that was um, that envisions the idea of uh, reopening a tunnel that connects Charlottesville City Yard to the Tenton Page neighborhood. Um, I've actually hired a, a part-timer to work on that project over the summer, so that should be um, waking up. She starts in, in June, and um, we'll, we'll see if we could get sort of a quick win um, with that soon. Um, uh, Chris, you're also in that group. Is there anything new about that that you've heard about? No, just the working group getting uh, started, and then I guess we'll get into some action steps. Perfect. Um, and we'll want to um, schedule conversations with, like, uh, Charlottesville uh, Public Works and so forth um, quickly on that. Um, uh, we don't have any of the um, Folks from the Friends of uh, Biscuit Run group. Um, I have some updates that I can share about um, Biscuit Run in the um, in the organization updates. Um, so we'll, um, with your permission, uh, keep moving because we only have about half an hour left, and we still have those critical organization updates. Um, and then. Uh, Finally, the Three Notch Trail was is, is a working group. They just didn't convene at the summit because there were there were scheduling, and Ali could only be in one spot at one time. Um, wondering, Ali, if you could if you have any updates to share about the Three Notch Trail and or Alberic, feel free to to chime in on anything she misses. Ellie, are you able to unmute? I can just go. That's okay. Um, go ahead, Alberic. Sure. There's not 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 too much happening. We have sent the the legal agreement stuff back to uh, FHWA. I think that's the right acronym I'm using right there. FHWA DOT. One of the transportation, the feds. The feds have gotten our um, legal agreements. So we're gonna wait to hear back from them. And then we will probably be sending out an RFP sometime in the beginning of uh, the first quarter of the next fiscal year. So between July and September, we're hoping for the more on the July side, but we'll see how things go and how uh, the RFP process kind of works out. So there's no, not much happening yet. We're still kind of waiting, but hopefully starting, you know, towards the end of the calendar year, um, more work and we'll have the the firm we're going to work with and kind of know going forward what's going to be happening so right now it's a lot of just creep and wait essentially unfortunately so so to clarify alberic uh when you talk about the rfp the rfp is to recruit a consultant to run the um study is that correct yes that'll that'll be the people to since it is a planning grant it's not a it's not a capital grant. We're not building the Three Notch Trail with the money we received from the DOT. This is $2 million just to like plan where we're going to put it. Essentially, the whatever firm or consulting group you work with um, will basically help us get the alignment for the Three Notch Trail. Because right now, we don't know if it's going to go through Crozet, around Crozet, follow old train track right away, which has been apparently hard to do because the railroads have put a little little clause saying you can't use old right away for... Um, recreation. So it's going to be a lot of figuring that out in the next year or two. Um, 
Thank you. So sometimes stuff moves under the surface, sometimes stuff is on the surface. TNT seems to be a bit under the surface now and we'll be looking for for more um, on the surface stuff in the fall. Um, uh, okay, and uh, Tommy is not here. Uh, is anyone here qualified to talk about the Luke DeVille? If not, I'll just say put it on your calendar for September uh, 23 and 24. It, it's mind-blowingly fun, super awesome. And as we discussed earlier, potential um, opportunity to have a different kind of mini summit attached to it. Um, that'd be at the Wool Factory. Uh, so the Saturday events all center around um, uh, Rivanna River Company start and finish and like a party for people who finish it, party for people who don't finish it too. Um, and Saturday focused on doing the whole loop and then Sunday uh, will be focused on low key variants or little segments of it. So definitely uh, put it on your calendar. Um, and then the um, last item that's a collective impact thing is that uh, the Move to Health Equity Coalition uh, is a organization of, with a lot of overlap with this group, but it also um, includes a lot of um, service organizations like JABA or the Y or, you know, Region 10 health-oriented groups. And uh, one of the four priority areas is um, improving active lifestyles for community members. I'm the co-chair of that along with um, Katana from the Climate Collaborative. Um, it, it's tough to be running two coalitions that do almost the same thing. So I wanted to let you know that I'm uh, looking at ways to sort of combine that work. And then um, uh, there is also another um, piece that uh, overlaps that um, I will let Jen talk about during the organization update. Um, so uh, with that, the uh, final piece of uh, coalition-wide business is that our next um, our next meeting will also be a Zoom-based meeting, and that will be for the end of June. I will send out a doodle poll to uh, select a date for that. And it looks like the following meeting after that would be something in person that would be this mini summit. So there's a bunch of time between now and then to be, um, to be talking and working about that stuff. So, um, yeah, so, um, Moving on to the favorite part of the agenda is the organization update. Um, these historically, ever the whole five years we've been doing this have been actually the most profitable part of the meeting because people hear about what's working or, or what their peers are working on and then they have input or ideas or resources to share. So, um, Let's uh, go around the room and anyone who wishes to provide a, a quick update for the benefit of the group about what they're doing um, around the ideas of uh, connectivity, mobility, active communities, access to the outdoors. Um, so, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Kind of exciting thing. Uh, we've got a couple of VDOT grants finally got the bid for the Rugby Avenue Trail and the Washington Park bike grant connector thing. I think we've talked about those before. The new exciting one, which is a relatively easy win, um, which I wasn't as sure was going to be, is the golf course at Penn Park is going to allow us to connect uh, the, the Ravana Trail area there. Now that there's a bridge over Meadow Creek from the Lachlan Hill developer. Uh, you'll be able to cross that bridge from the Locust Avenue side over onto the uh, north side of the creek and turn right 
and go down Meadow Creek to the confluence of the river and then cut across a corner of the golf course and tie into the very long riverfront trail at Penn Park that's been there for years. It's an old bird bed of some sort. So um, I wasn't so sure golf was going to be interested in having that mixed use. And they were very easy, like, yep, sure, this is great. Apparently, the WNOD trail up in Northern Virginia crosses through the town of Herndon, Herndon's golf course. And they have thousands of users an hour and no conflicts. So we got some tips from them about the signage. But uh, looks like that trail will get built. It'll be like a four foot wide dirt surface trail for a while. It's not going to be a paved trail anytime soon, but we're going to open that connection and that uh, allows the Urbana Trail and our uh, those kind of trails to stay along waterways and not have to go up through the neighborhoods and along the street and down through the fitness trail. We'll leave that link open for people, but I think this will be a very exciting thing where a small gap gets filled and it kind of opens up almost a mile of trail that a lot of people may have never seen. So that, that was an exciting, easy win, and we hope to get that thing built mid-May-ish. Maybe that'll be a new National Trails Day type um, celebration that we can have. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. And I think it's also worthy of noting that that um, not only connects like Locust and really Park Street to um, Penn Park, but there, from there, there's already a great connection to Dunlora and Belvedere and subdivisions in Albemarle County along the river north. So um, starting to look like some um, generation long work coming together. So awesome. Um, staying on the um, city of Charlottesville, um, Ben, do you have anything uh, that, that you'd like to share? Anything that's already quick? Uh, yeah, we're working through our non-motorized prioritization process, so figuring out which uh, bike facilities and sidewalks that the city will move forward with beyond what we already have sort of programmed right now. Um, we are working through sort of the qualitative side of things. We've looked at things quantitatively and looked at, you know, how the network is performing, how traffic works, where we're having safety issues, where there are potential connections to um important facilities and transit in the, in the area. So we've already looked at that side of things. Now we're looking at sort of, are these projects that we've even put in feasible? Are they feasible on a certain timeline? Um, are, are they able to be paired with other projects like curb ramps or, or crosswalks or um, any other projects that are within the project list itself? Um, or does it you know mesh with our paving schedule? Um, so we're working through all those elements right now and, and hope to have that list, um, at least a draft version of it out early this summer um, to review with stakeholders and the public. And uh, what else we have? Well, the big news today actually is that we had someone accept the bike ped position with the city. So uh, barring any issues with the pre-hire screening, we, we will have a bike ped coordinator starting in June. Um, I'm very excited about that, and that'll give us a lot more resources to, to execute a lot more of these bike and pedestrian priorities that we have. That, that's amazing. Uh, and um, Ben actually has a lot of things going on. Like he gave just the tiniest scraps of the iceberg. I asked him in the chat to link to his um, new quarterly transportation report. There's a ton in there. And and I would actually, rather than having him basically read his report, have him just share the report so we can all see it. Yep, um, absolutely. I'll, I'll dig uh, through the council agenda and provide the link in the chat. Awesome. And and if it's a pain for you, we could figure it out for you. Um, it is serious good news, y'all. Thanks for, for sharing. Who else has? Stuff to share. I saw Diana drop something in the chat. Free exercise classes in Seville and Louisa. Yeah, so we currently, I'll tell you about the Charlottesville ones, but if anyone wants to know about the Louisa ones, let me know. Um, 
but we are having a free step class and while it is inside it is likely going to be moved outside but it is at fashion square mall at beyond fit or yeah beyond fitness with sabrina um and it's really fun it's every wednesday from 5 30 to 6 30. it's really community-based a, a different way to get moving if you're like normally on a bike or running around um it's free no registration is required as i said just show up a little bit before and sign a waiver awesome thank you um well we're in the sort of um healthy live space uh jen could you um share about the community health improvement plan Sure, Ben and Lucinda, you can go take a nap. You know this one too well. You, they could tell you it by this point, but the they've been on all the meetings, which is we have, we worked last year with um, about 85 organizations within the health district, which is Almoral, Charlottesville, Louisa, Green, Nelson, Fluvanna, and um, determined that the policy target areas to improve health and reduce health inequities that need our attention were transportation, digital access and literacy, uh, the healthcare workforce and mental and behavioral health. So there are four work groups um, of ranging from about six to 20 agencies each that are working on goals and objectives to measurable goals and objectives to move the needle um, in those areas in transportation all of the usual suspects are there um, uts cat jaunt um, pc um, tjpdc we have been we've met a couple times and we've come up with some objectives some of which are already in the works and some goals to improve transit in particular for not not only to um health systems, but everyday activity centers. And the UVA and Santerra are also working with us on specific projects to improve transportation to and from um, medical appointments and the system, the health systems in the hospitals. So that's looking at volunteer driver program, which um, has been really helped with from Lucinda. And um, it's looking at, I'll, supporting John and, and bolstering John's uh, route range and determining kind of best practices there to have to help folks not miss appointments, but also discharge and return to appointments. So um, we welcome anyone into that group. It's a, it's a, it's a very productive um, task oriented, um, objective oriented group to kind of meet the indicators and get this work done. It needs to be completed by the end of 2025. So we anticipate um, that what we've distilled it down to is, um, is doable by then. And we hope to um, achieve all of those. I'm just going to throw in the chat where you can kind of read about all four objectives and the transportation goals. Um, like Peter said, some of it overlaps with move to health equity. Um, members definitely are part of this group too. And I'm happy to, I'm also putting my email in the chat if you have any questions on this or um, what we're working on, just reach out to me as well. Thanks, Jen. Um, super awesome. And um, they, uh, one of the things I, I, I found is that I would uh, think up all these reasons why alternative transportation is important. And then I saw it's all written right there in the community health improvement plan. Like, so the, this uh, healthcare, um, uh, whatever, keeping people well, this wellness imperative that we have is, is a really solid um, science-based um, approach for, for having, you know, better connectivity. So thank you for um, boosting that work. Um, who else has updates to share? I see you, Lucinda. Um, I just want to follow Jen 
um, with the good news that our mobility management grant application was recommended for funding um, to the Commonwealth Transportation Board. So uh, it looks like we hopefully will be able to start a program to help older adults and people with disabilities um, get more and better transportation. The first step of that is going to be developing a one call center and I'm working on putting out the RFP um, for a partner to work with us on that right now. Um, and, but I, I'm going to forego like all my program updates and talk about something that I've been kind of noodling around a little bit. I, I went to the uh, Transportation Planning Research Advisory Committee meeting. It's a VDOT um, committee organization that does research um, for VDOT. And one of the proposals that they had this year was um, using vehicle miles travel reduction um, instead of the level of service to um, for planning. And I just thought this was really interesting because what, like, I'm like a big picture kind of policy person. And I'm thinking, like, I'm always thinking, like, you know, why, why is VDOT making the roads go faster and taking out the stoplights and, you know, just making it more hostile for um, non-car users? And it's because of what they're measuring. And it's like, it's not VDOT's fault and they're not like evil or anything. It's just because of what they're measuring is the level of service. Um, which is, you know, less traffic, less stopping at the stoplights, moving at the speed limit, moving faster. Um, but if they changed, and Cal so California did this, there's a precedent for it. If they changed the measures that they were using from the level of service of going fast and being no reducing car accidents um, to a reduction in vehicle miles traveled, um, I think that a lot of those problems would be solved and we would kind of all be working together towards something um, that would be more meaningful for the community. Um, it would obviously make a lot of changes for, um, for climate change too. And it would open up a lot of doors for alternative types of transportation. Uh, so I just, I'm really interested in this. I, it would be a statewide initiative. It'd be something really big, but I wanna plant the seed <laughs> I just want to plant some little seeds out there in the spring um, for people to think about that. And that's, that's all. So that, that's amazing, Lucinda. And anything that we can do to contribute positively to that discussion? Be, because um, it, it's not value neutral. There are people that think more miles equals good. And so, like, how to win that argument is going to be, like, crucial. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I was just thinking of getting, like, organizations that lobby um, to start thinking about, you know, maybe putting some pressure in, in the state area. Um, but you're right. I think that there's a lot more that has to happen before that happens. <laughs> so just having the conversation, I mean, I, I, I'd like to know more about it. Um, maybe, you know, talk with people at some point. Yeah. yeah. Please do it and keep sharing. Go ahead, Jason. That's a big topic um, in the transportation realm. I mean, even when it comes to electric vehicles or hybrids, you know, sometimes those increase vehicle miles travel because they're cheaper uh, to some extent. So there's there's like many layers to this. It's complicated. But ultimately, if you can reduce vehicle miles traveled um, overall, then that is a better metric than maximizing how many cars you can stick through a system. Aren't, so aren't keep at it, Lucinda. Keep going. Aren't bicycles classified as vehicles by the state? So is there a way to say, hey, the more bikes you get out there, the more vehicle miles you get? I don't know. I, I didn't Michael, hear that. Uh, yeah, so so Chris asked about like maybe there's a way to um, at least account for bicycles and people not in cars as distance traveled. So it doesn't have to be a taking away of activity, but a measuring a shift in activity or something like that. 
Um, yeah, that goes back to the data question of street mm -hmm. light and stuff like that. So, yeah, because bicycles are classified as vehicles by the state. So there's an argument to say, well, if they're vehicles, are you counting the miles that bicycles travel if they're considered oh. vehicles? I see a lot of nodding heads here. Uh, Michael, go ahead. Well, uh, we uh, Al Barrick was very instrumental in getting safe routes to school out to the Woodbrook School uh, in my area. And uh, they came out and with VDOT, Michael Barnes was there, county people, VDOT people, and the safe routes to school people, and uh, came out and checked out this proposed path. and. We did some bushwhacking, some stream leaping, and <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see what their report is. I sent piles of photos to uh, Al Barrick, and uh, hopefully something will happen. Yeah, no, thank you. And and Michael, thanks for the credit, but this, this Woodbrook was chosen. We, we did this because I remember my first meeting in here, you mentioned your Woodbrook connector, and then I saw the Safe Parts of School stuff, and I was like, I have an idea, a light bulb went off. So thank you to you for really being the one to actually get this idea off the ground in the first place. Yeah, well, thank you. All right. Um, thanks, Michael. Um, the, uh, uh, Alberic, do you have any updates uh, from Albemarle County? Yeah, I, I'll do some quick ones. I provided the the report in the chat if anyone wants to like get into a deep dive of what we do. Um, Thank you for doing that. We have that. to see for the school that we get the report in six to eight weeks, and we will kind of know it's like a blueprint of other projects we can kind of uh, go for with VDOT and other funding to improve. And we're going to go for other schools um, as the application process goes on. So expect to see other schools in the county get this treatment that would work. Did um, Freebridge Lane. Uh, we are going to be implementing a pilot program to basically create a little park pedestrian promenade. So we're closing it off to all motor vehicles, except for obviously emergency and parks and rec between where it hits 250 and Darden's house. So that'll be just a nice place for people to walk. Um, and then as we get funding and as time goes on, and as, as plans kind of get flushed out, we're going to add more or parks will add more amenities and it'll become a fully fledged park. Um, we are working right now on, we just began stakeholder meetings and groups on a shared use path that would go from the city into the county on Route 20. So it'd start, I guess, Quarry Road um, in Route 20, and then it would continue down underneath the highway, and it would end at the intersection of 20 and 53, I guess the road that goes up to Monticello. Um, I'm not the lead on that one. That's my coworker, Jessica. She is, she's the one on that one, but that's mentioned in the report. So that will be an interesting project to see kind of what options we have to get a bike facilities through there. And then for other bike ped stuff specifically, uh, we're getting sidewalks on Commonwealth that are being built right now uh, behind the, um, behind Stonefield. And then we are also working on, um, a shared use path that will continue along Burkmore Road from, I guess it ends by that roundabout on Hilton Hilton Heights Road. So it'll continue down to uh, Rio. And then there'll also be another phase where it goes, I guess that that kind of loop where it crosses Rio then goes and hits 29 eventually. So there'll be a shared use path along there. And then if I'm missing something, uh, it's in the report. There's a lot, we're doing a lot of stuff. And obviously the bike to work week is also happening. Albert, do you know when they're going to be closing Freebridge for the pilot program? Um, I I don't know. I mean, we would like to do it soon-ish. It's probably going to be pretty basic. We're probably going to put up like gate or bollard or just I mean, even some kind of just like construction fence saying, please don't go here if you're in a car. Um, but once I know informa more information, I mean, I'll, I'll you know let people know here as well. So look out for that. And if you do use Freebridge Lane to drive, well you have a few more times left, essentially, and then we're cutting you off. Sorry. Awesome. Thank you. And um, I think this kind of fits under the county, too, is that there's a VDOT is running a public meeting about the Fifth Street Trail and Hub uh, project on um, 
Wednesday, May 3rd from 5 to 7 at the county's um, 5th Street office yes. building. I, yes. I put that in the notes. I'll yeah, um, I, I might be, I might be there for that. Uh, it's kind of like this, like, I know parks people will definitely be there and Vita will be there to answer questions. Um, and that'll just, if you have questions about the, I guess, shared use path, I'll go from the Wegmans down to um, the, the bottom of 5th Street down over there, kind of where the, the stream is. Uh, please, you know, show up and ask questions. Oh, I see Lonnie, your hands up. I guess I have to respond to you since you're planning commissioner. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I, I would just say too, as I mentioned, that there is a um, the secondary road priority list mm -hmm. was, was also discussed at a recent board of supervisors missed mm -hmm. meeting and is out there for comment. I will pull up that link and put it in the chat. I would encourage people that run or cycle in the rural area to look at that list um, and make sure that you comment your, if you are in that, you know, if you are an admiral or, or not, either way, comment to the supervisor of that district or the board of supervisors if something's gonna affect you. Yes, and I think um, the the public hearing will be Wednesday, May 17th. That's the right date. So if you have comments, obviously please show up in person or on Zoom and you know tell me why we shouldn't pay something. I mean, ideally, I would, I would really, really like to get to the point that, and when they hold those meetings, that along with this, as I said, along with this traffic counts, that someone at least pulls up Strava and says, "Hey, this is highly used by runners and cyclists." That there's some data about running and cycling, walking good. Yeah. I can I can talk to to Kevin about that and see if we can kind of implement that for a future projects. Since right now we mostly go off of what the residents on the actual road. Um, want the road to be essentially uh robin do you have a question or are you muted right now uh robin you're you're still muted we we can't hear you Sorry. Hey, hey robin oh, yeah. yeah you're muted there okay Sorry. there you go so Three things, mm -hmm. um, we I, we don't, in Willem Mills, and I know this, I went to the county meetings, so I kind of know what's going on with the, with the free bridge and all that, but Willem Mills, you know, has some emergency kind of situations with pedestrian, you know, crossings and things like that. So I became, and this is what I'm asking you guys, because you really know what, behind the scenes, like how these things get implemented. We have a couple uh, on fairway, uh, the man is blind, totally blind, and his wife has been trying to get a crossing fair, between fairway and Caroline for 20 years. So I became a neighborhood representative because we don't have a president for Willem Mills. So, um, and I got petitions, got, went to Brennan Duncan like three times. First, I brought all the petitions, everybody signed up. And then, you know, for street crossings for the kids, for blind, you know, signs, the whole nine yards in December of last year. All right. And then uh, I, hold on, Robin. What, so that yeah. that's that's not an Albemarle County. Yeah. That's something you'll want to discuss with Ben. But what I'm saying is, how is it that you guys can implement things quickly? And in fact, after doing what we're supposed to be doing, is it because you have an association, or you know, how does that happen? Uh, like, I, why don't, I'm you know, not. I'm not going to really answer because I'm not too sure how it happens in the city. I don't want to. Speak okay. me wrong, so I, I'm sorry for not knowing. Um, no, it's okay. And if you have a better answer, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, currently we're working through our prioritization process in the city to figure out where we need to be building sidewalks and bike facilities. So I, I believe that this part of fairway is on the list. Um, we're doing analysis to compare it against all of the projects throughout the city to figure out where that should fall on our list going forward. Um, just looking at the Google Street View, I, I imagine that there are some concerns with ADA in this area as well. Uh, you mentioned that there was a blind person in the area that needs this crossing. Um, that There are issues with the constructability of the, those ADA facilities in this area. 
um, that I'm sure are going to be an issue um, when we look at implementation for it. Um, but beyond that, I, I will say we are in the process of looking through what we're doing with projects oh. in the city. So, a sidebar: I got free solar yesterday installed. It took two hours. So, it, it, just to let you know that Dominion is giving out free solar. Okay, thank you. Awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the comments, although we'll continue them in, in just a minute and acknowledge that it's 3:30. I appreciate everybody for um, showing up. As I mentioned, the the notes are already underway. Please go in there and help make them good and legible and available to those who cannot make it to this gathering. We we have um, just the Mobility Alliance representative list is up around 180. So never do they all show up. This is like a fifth of how many people who are interested in this meeting. So the notes are extremely important. So please go in there and make sure that the stuff you know about is, is well presented and uh, digestible to someone who wasn't here. Uh, Doodle poll will come out about the next meeting um, probably several weeks from now. It's not urgent, that'll be late June. So thanks for everybody who came and acknowledge with gratitude your gift of time and the rest of your afternoon is yours. Anyone who, is, who wants to keep going, we'll keep the channel open until four.